Hello, 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 everyone. Happy Get Crackin' on Christmas. We're going to talk all about holiday scenes today. Um, but I'll just make sure everybody can hear me okay. I always hate that awkward uh, delay. Maybe someday they'll they'll figure that out. Maybe someday. Yay! Thank you so much, Kelly. Yes, we are so excited ah, about our new home. So excited. Yay, Robin. I'm so excited you're doing the Hero Arts Mixed Media Stamp Along tomorrow. I really wish I could be part of it, but I just, yeah, that's not happening. Uh, hello, Susie. Thank you so much. Hi, Erica. Oh, snow day. Perfect, perfect. Love that. Hello, Linda. Hi, Heather. Hi, Sherry. All right. I always like to start my um, Get Cracking on Christmas lives and just kind of let everybody know what Get Cracking on Christmas is in case you are catching me for the first time. Um, and maybe you're not catching me for the first time, but you will uh, hear some new information, right? So happy 2024. Uh, Get Cracking on Christmas is a series that I started years ago, actually, with my friend Shari, who I saw just popped into the comments. Um, she and I, it was January. We were both just chit-chatting, as we often do. And we were just like kind of bummed. We didn't, neither of us sent very many holiday cards out, but yet we purchased a lot of new uh, holiday stamps and supplies that just didn't get used. And we were just like, oh, it's just always so stressful towards the end of the year and we don't have time to get it done and blah, 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 right? So we decided just as friends, we were going to challenge each other to make one holiday card a month um, and post it on our blogs. Again, just as friends. Um, and then it just evolved um, for a couple of years. I had a group of people that um, I looked to to help share on the third Thursday of the month. Many of them are still participating in Get Cracking on Christmas, but I've kind of uh, made it a little bit less structured, I guess, uh, now that a bunch of you guys do know about it. But basically what happens um, is on the third Thursday of the month, I will post my holiday card. Um, it'll be with a variety of companies and supplies and techniques. Um, and then on that blog post on the third Thursday of the month, I'll let you know when I'm going live. I quickly found that I can't consistently say every, when I'm going to go live um, every month, just because it's just really tricky logistically um, with all the other deadlines and things that pop up behind the scenes. So, but I always post it on that blog post um, and they change. Sometimes they're during the day, sometimes they're during the night, um, sometimes they're during the weekend, doesn't matter. Uh, if you guys want to join along in Get Cracking on Christmas, which I encourage you to do, um, you can post any time throughout the month. I know people are always like, oh no, I didn't post on the third Thursday. You do not need to post on the third Thursday. Um, you can use the hashtag get cracking on Christmas, although hashtags are kind of a pain in the butt right now, especially on Instagram. I don't necessarily see the most recent hashtags anymore. Um, so you can always tag me in your post when you are getting some holiday cards done. But the thought process is, is yes, is it a little weird to be making a holiday card in June? Sure. But what I like about it is, um, honestly, it makes me kind of think of different color combos to use because I'm in a different season. Um, it encourages me to test out different techniques and play. And I really enjoy that creative play. That's part of our hobby, right? Um, and the thing that I love the most is at the end of the year, um, as we approach that October, November, December mark, I have a good stack of holiday cards already made, so I don't have to stress about getting them done. Um, so full confession, it is January 2024, and I have a huge bin of holiday cards. I did not send any holiday cards this year or 
in 2023. Um, a couple. I sent a couple. I sent them to my nieces and my nephews um, and a couple people. But really, I didn't send any. Um, and the reason why is Chris and I had just announced um, we just purchased a home. So uh, right before my Creative Journey Art Retreat, which is my in-person event in November, um, we found out we were going to have to move from our home. Um, we rent. We've been renting for seven years in this home. Um, and so we were frantically house hunting and it took up a lot of my time. So I just had to let a few things go. And one of them was addressing um, holiday cards. So I do have a huge stash of holiday cards, but I still want to make them this year. I really um, enjoy enjoy making them. So I don't want to have a whole year where I'm not making any. All right. Um, thank you guys so much for joining me if you're joining live. And again, if you're catching the replay, thank you as well for that. Um, Linda's telling me it is not a mermaid day in Ontario. I'm assuming it's very cold and possibly snowy. Uh, thank you guys so much for the congratulations. Um, and yeah, Libby is reminding Shari that even though Shari can't read a calendar, she can make them all month long. Yeah, you got you guys do not have to post on the third Thursday. I'm just sticking to that schedule. So you guys will know when to look for when my live is. And then the other thing that um, these lives are for not only for me to teach you some fun tips and tricks and get together because I love doing that. Um, I encourage you when you're joining me during these lives, um, whether you're watching live or on replay, start working on your holiday cards. Uh, do some coloring, die cut some sentiments, do whatever you would like. Uh, before I flip my screen, I do just want to let you guys know if you're watching live or you're watching very, very quickly on replay, um, because I am moving, uh, this is my last live in this studio, which is crazy. Um, I love this space. It works fairly well for me. Um, I know I grumble about a few things, but it's done me really well. Um, and especially, you know, I have been in this studio space for seven years now, but especially um, since 2020, I have spent a lot of time right here here. Man, if I clocked in my hours, oh gosh, I don't even want to know. But it's been a great space. Um, it's a decent size. It's bright. I love the sun, although I'm excited in my new space to not have to deal with the slider door. Um, hopefully, it'll my new space will be uh, sunny enough uh, for the kitties to still join me, which by the way, I have Mr. Harley. He's sleeping right here. You guys might see like a little black and white and Jack is on the floor. He's actually sleeping on a lawn fawn box that I just got um, with some more spring goodies. So um, yeah, let's see. Yay. I'm so glad Erica says I've learned a lot from the Get Cracking on Christmas series and I found some stamp companies that I've never really heard of. I love that. Yeah, that's the other thing I love about Get Cracking on Christmas is I teach a lot of classes and I'm thankful to be, um, you know, to design for several different companies. But Get Cracking on Christmas is like a free for all for me. There's no rules just the holiday card. Um, I think I mentioned, was talking about my studio space and then I forgot to mention. So I put up on the screen, I am having a moving sale. Um, it ends tomorrow. Today is January 19th. It ends January 20th, um, but it's 30% off. So as much as I would love all of you to come help me pack and move, um, maybe you can purchase some things and help lighten the load. Um, AKA binders and gear. Buy some shirk merch, some comfy sweatshirts and binders, please and thank you. Those take up the most space. Um, so you got to use code MOVE24. And again, um, that sale ends on the 20th. So we are going to uh, flip our screens or I'm going to flip my screen. You guys hopefully aren't going to flip your screen. Um, and we are going to talk about 
scene building and some fun tips and tricks for fussy cutting uh, these little critters. Hello, Miss Brienne. So Brienne Libby, I we were talking about um, the Hero Arts Mixed Media event tomorrow. Uh, Robin's in the chat and she's getting ready um, in her space for the event tomorrow. I'm so sad I'm not going to be able to be part of it. I really was like, oh, I should just sign up. But I have way too much going on. Way, way too much going on. Um, but I know everybody that's teaching is going to rock it. Libby's teaching. Brianne's teaching. Uh, my friend Sharon is teaching. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. Hello, hello, hello. Um, I'm just looking. Oh, yeah. Susie says my binders are the best. Thank you. I think my binders are the best, too. I've got I got my stash over here. I love them so much. They're really, really nice quality. Um, I'm addicted to paper supplies, but really nice paper supplies. And since I have been packing, I can fully, fully state out loud. If I never buy another notebook or journal again in my lifetime, I will never run out of notebooks and journals. I'm addicted. Addicted, addicted. Um, this sweatshirt is probably... I bounce back between um, XL and 2X. I think this one might be an XL. But my sweatshirts are very roomy. They're very comfy, relaxed fit. Um, yay. Yeah, Libby's saying um, that everybody's going to have so much fun in the Hero Arts Mixed Media event tomorrow, and it's not too late if anybody wants to join us. So, uh, Brienne, if you want to throw a link to the Hero Arts Mixed Media event, those details, please, please do. All right. So let's jump in um, about the cards. So these were created with Purple Onion Designs stamps, which I absolutely love. Michelle's the owner of the company. Stacy Yakula is the artist of the artwork. Um, I've been using Purple Onion Design stamps since the store I managed <laughs> was open, which was over 11 years ago was when we closed. So, um, but what's so fun about them is their whimsical feel, and I just love creating scenes with them. Um, so, and I couldn't decide exactly which scene I wanted to create, so I had fun playing with both of them. And, um, but today we're going to just work on the city park scene, not the Christmas tree scene. I actually love this Christmas tree one, but watercoloring that tree just takes a little bit longer because of um, going around those ornaments. So I didn't want to make you guys have to like deal with that. But let's talk about just the details of this card. Remember, there is a blog post um, with detailed images, detailed shots, supply lists. Um, I linked the blog post and pinned it at the top of the chat. It's also linked in the description of this video. Um, and the most of the supplies are linked in the description of the video as well. Um, I would love, love, love if you guys make sure you're subscribed to my channel and give a little thumbs up to this video as well, just to help other people uh, discover these videos. So what I did, and we'll talk more about stamping and um, cutting out the critters and coloring in a minute. But for the background, I stamped the, um, the Christmas tree on the smooth side of Distress watercolor cardstock. And I used Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink, which is what I use when I Copic color, but it also works great with watercoloring. So that's what I used. Um, and then I watercolored with uh, Distress watercolor pencils, which probably won't be a surprise to most of you because I am obsessed with them. Um, but what I wanted to point out, something fun that I did, and I don't know if I'm going to get it to show up on camera as well, um, is this fun little beading that is on the tree. What I did is every other dot, I did glossy accents with Prisma glitter, okay? And then the opposites, so every other, is just glossy accents. And it's really, really pretty. I love 
how it turned out. It looks really cool um, in person. All right, so now, um, we'll, again, we'll talk about the critters in just a minute, but we are going to create this city park scene today um, on this live. And so what I did ahead of time is I actually already stamped and colored uh, my little critters and the swatch um, list of the Copics that I used is also over on my website. I always, always share a swatch list of the Copics that I use. That way, if you don't have the same exact colors, um, you can find similar colors, or if you're using a different coloring medium, you can find similar colors. Um, but I didn't want this live to be about Copic coloring. I wanted it more to be about the water coloring and how to deal with these critters when we have to fussy cut them. Because I do get that question a lot, and I get it. I know fussy cutting is not everybody's favorite thing to do, um, especially now that there are the option of coordinating dyes out in our in our hobby. However, I think it's good to get better at fussy cutting, to kind of work on that skill and have that in our back pocket, because sometimes you don't want to use a coordinating die, or maybe sometimes you don't want to spend the money to purchase a coordinating die. So, um, so let's get started with my tips and tricks for getting these guys cut out. So the first thing that I'm going to do, and again, I, all I did was color it. Um, but the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use a fingertip X-Acto knife, okay? And I went to school for graphic design, and in a lot of our foundational classes, we had to do very old school paste-ups with rubber cement and X-Actos and rulers and everything, and it super stressed me out anytime I had to use the X-Acto knife. Well, I wish that I knew, or if, I don't know if this existed, but I wish I knew about this Fiskars uh, fingertip X-Acto back when I was in college, because when you have your finger up through here and down like this, you have so much more control, and it's not as scary as holding this long pen tip um, or pen-shaped X-Acto, and I just love it so much more. So the first thing that I do after I color my images is I'll just cut down the piece of cardstock around the critters so I don't have this big piece of paper. So I had all three of my critters stamped and I just cut them into three chunks of cardstock. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna focus on all these little itty bitty in between areas with my X-Acto knife. Um, so I have this fingertip X-Acto knife in my online shop and also um, having a small self-healing mat. And I have these in my online shop as well. Um, and what I do is while my image is a bigger piece of cardstock, I focus on cutting out these areas. Now, instead of stressing and being like, oh my gosh, there's a bunch of different curves. There's a bunch of, it's super stressful. I look at everything almost as a straight cut. I don't worry too, too much um, when I get into doing the little in-between areas of what's curved and what isn't. And I'll kind of explain that to you in just a minute. But right here underneath uh, the teal arm, you guys can see there's a little white triangle. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to go ahead with my X-Acto and I just drag that X-Acto like two-ish times along each line of this triangle. And I that one actually just popped right out, that little piece of cardstock. And now we have a hole in between uh, their arms. And then I'll go up um, around their head. Now it is curved around the bunny a little bit, but I just I just take that fingertip X-Acto and just trace, just like I would um, with a pen. I don't worry 
too much like oh my gosh this is a curve this is going to be hard to do um and i just take every little angle as its own i just go in and focus on one line at a time instead of the whole picture okay and again that piece fell out usually i have to wiggle a little bit in the back but all my pieces are falling out today so it's a good it's a good exacto knife day uh thank you guys so much um for the congratulations on the new house we are so excited so excited so the next couple weeks there's not going to be as much crafty uh shares from me as you guys might be used to um we are hoping to be out of uh, this home by February 1st, which is very fast approaching. And um, the first thing I am going to be setting up is my studio because um, it's my job and I need a place to work. Uh, but it's going to be it's going to be a little crazy. It's going to be a little crazy. Um, and I'm sure my initial setup of my studio might not be the final setup. Uh, I might need to purchase some new furniture and such. Um, actually, Shari is going to help me. I'm going to give her all the measurements of all the things, and she's going to help me figure out what we're going to do in that room. She helped me um, with this space uh, seven years, or it was probably like six years ago that she helped me th with this space. We were living here about a year when I finally was like, okay, I gotta, I gotta make this space more efficient. So you guys can see, I'm just going around all these little areas and getting the exacto knifing done. Now we've got these shopping bag handles. All right. And I'm not going to do those little slivers on the left and the right, but I am going to do that chunk in the center. And again, it doesn't have to be scary. Just kind of look at everything as little steps, not the whole picture. Um, but I find with this fingertip X-Acto knife, it's just so much more easier to control um, where I'm cutting. And again, this is what I was mentioning. Often I'll just kind of have to wiggle it a little bit to get that piece out. Um, Erica says, I've had to move my craft room several times in my life. I do not envy that job. Yeah, I'm dreading it a little bit. Um, I got a lot packed yesterday amongst the rest of our house. Uh, after today's live, I am going to start to dive into this space. I really kind of just wanted it. Um, my most nervous part is just, I got to make sure I'm packing what I'm going to need right away. Like where I, where I'll know it, it is, <laughs> um, because I know Shari and I have our online class February 10th under the sea. So if you haven't registered for that yet, you still can. Um, and I think I think that's the first thing I have to do live in my studio is under the sea <coughs> off the top of my head. Um, but I have stuff I have to design for, you know, deadlines and stuff too. So I kind of have to hit that ground running once we get in there. Um, so my most used supplies are going to be very easy to find. I can tell you that. Um Yay, I'm, I'm glad that this is helpful. I know, again, I get it. I hear it all the time when I teach and we have to fussy cut something. Uh, I hear the grumbles, so I know. But I think, again, I do truly feel the more you practice something, the better you'll get at it. Um, and if you can find some easier ways of doing things, it doesn't have to be so cumbersome. So I actually like using this exacto so much that I'm actually just doing these little areas up between their legs. And then I'll just kind of uh, cut it off at the bottom. I'll show you guys what I mean, what I'm doing. Um, like this little piece here. I could have done that with scissors, this piece right here. But I actually get so comfortable doing 
it with this exacto I rather just do it than with my scissors and I will be doing some stuff with scissors in just a minute We'll go between the bear's legs. There we go. And um, I'll go up between the bunny and the shopping bags. These guys are so cute. So uh, Purple Onion and Stacy came out with a release. Um, I want to say it might have been towards the end of November. Um, and between catching my breath after my art retreat, house hunting, and the holidays, I did not get a chance to design with the release. So I was so excited. I was like, oh, yay, that's what I'll use for uh, Get Cracking on Christmas because I, I love these images. And there's a bunch of really fun new images um, from this release, not just what I'm using today. So definitely be sure to go check it out. Um, and if you're enabled, let Michelle know I sent you. Um, she's so sweet. She is a, often a sponsor of all of my events as well. So see how I did all those little chunks down here um, instead of having to get my scissors up there. And I'm actually going to do the same thing up here on the bunny's ears. Um... And then we'll get into using our scissors and then we will do our background. All right, so there we go. We've got all those little nitty gritty areas done. It wasn't that bad. I was chatting with you while I did it. Um, not necessarily watching the comments as well. <clears throat> Thank you guys so much for all the congratulations. It's so fun. This is my first home um, home buying situation. It's been a long time coming and lots of hard work, but it's very, very exciting. Um, yeah, yeah. So um, Nancy just said, uh, all the work to set up your new creative space will help get the steps in for your step bet challenge. Yeah, that's right. So there is a new step bet challenge coming. It's starting February 1st. I think you guys can understand now why I've held off on hosting another step bet. Um, I really just wanted to make sure that I was moved into my new space before I threw um, another challenge at myself. Um, so yeah. So now we're going to fussy cut and I'm using these Fiskars spring action scissors. Um, I was just talking to Chris about these last night. I've literally had this gray pair, this exact pair since I was in college. I graduated college in 2001. So you guys can do the math. Um, I have several pairs of these because, you know, crafters need several of the same kinds of tools. So when we lose one, we'll be able to find another. But this is the pair that I do use the most. Um, and the trick when you get into fussy cutting, whether you're using these spring action scissors or regular scissors, is you want to turn your paper and not your scissors. So you'll see my scissors are pointing in front of me pretty straight, and I'm turning my paper as I am gently squeezing down on the scissors. See? Spinning that paper and gently squeezing down. Now, the spring action scissors are awesome. They do take a little bit of getting used to, but um, I used to, uh, when I used to manage a paper crafting store, I would enable people to purchase these, and even to this day, I've enabled people, and I, I haven't really had anybody come back and say they've regretted purchasing these. What's also nice about them is they um, are easy on your hands, so if you have any hand cramping or arthritis in your hands, they're really much easier on your hands. Um, not having your fingers trapped in those loops. It's just they don't cramp up as much. Um, and so again, these scissors have been with me since, you know, I would say 2000, maybe even 1999. Um, and that was back in the day where I fussy cut everything. 
everything was fussy cut. There was no such thing as coordinating dies back then. So these guys have done me well for many, many years. So I'm just going around and trimming the rest of this image. Again, always moving the cardstock, not moving um, the scissors. So here we go. And I see Miss Brienne has been popping links in the chat. Thank you so much, Brienne. Remember, if you're watching me live or you're watching the replay before the end of the day on January 20th, 2024, um, I do have 30% off almost everything in my online shop. So definitely check it out. Um, help lighten my load so I don't have as much that I need to move. Um, although my friend Lindsay is helping me pack orders and she's a little nervous because there's a lot of orders, but I just told her, you know what? It's all going to work out. No worries. Um, Jen graduated college when she was 11. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. I wish that was the case, but I appreciate that. Kimberly says, as a military wife, I've packed up my craft room more times than I wanted, but the exciting part is making it all new again and perfect time to clean out. Yes, I'm doing a ton of cleaning out going into packing, and I also have a feeling I'll do a ton of cleaning out going out of packing. Um, the other exciting thing is we're renovating the basement um, for Chris's home office and for my business. So there's some things that I'm packing that I'm like, I think I'm going to need this. But once I get settled, I might decide to toss. <laughs> yeah, Jacqueline says she loves those scissors. Me too. Um, let's see. <laughs> Brienne says she thinks if dyes weren't around when she started crafting, she would have quit pretty fast. Well, I'm glad that that didn't happen, Miss Brienne. Um, let's see. You're welcome for the sale. <laughs> Amarita said she got some of the new uh, crafty gear, but not as much as Brienne and Libby. I know those girls, those girls. Um. Let's see. All right. So now my next trick that I like to do, I'm just trying to make sure I'm not losing the chat. If you guys have a specific question, it is helpful if you put the word question before it in all caps. Um, I love the chit chat, but just in case, um, so I don't miss any questions. So what I like to do next is I have this memento um, black brush marker, and I actually have these in my online shop. Um, there's quite a few new crafty supplies in my online shop because of my uh, creative journey art retreat <clears throat> supplies that I was using during that event. Um, anything that I had left in stock is in my online shop now. But what I love about this brush marker is it is that memento ink, which I'm not a fan of their ink pads per se, but the memento ink is not going to conflict with my Copic coloring at all. So that's why I like to use this specific brush marker and not just any black brush marker. So I have Tombow water-based um, brush markers that I also have probably have since almost college and they still work fine. But because it's a water-based brush marker, I find sometimes the marker will seep um, into the cardstock differently. And so that's why I like to use the Memento when I am working with my critters that I've already Copic colored. So you guys can kind of see little bits of white that are showing up and I feel that that looks a little unfinished. So I just take the edge of the brush marker and I just brush along the edge. Now, I do recommend um, that you do this fairly slowly uh, because your hand can accidentally slip. And that's what happened with, let's see, which guy? I'm trying to find. Yeah, you're not even going to be able to see. I slipped on this guy right here, and I had a whole dark black marker right to the left of his um, tail the, on the bear. And my sand eraser came to the rescue. I was able to sand erase it off and then recolor it brown. But 
I was like, oh my gosh, I was so mad. And it was because I was rushing again. Um, I've been really working really hard to wrap up a lot of my um, creative stuff so that I can focus on packing. So I was rushing, I'm not gonna lie. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that. But luckily the sand eraser saved the day. So again, I'm just gently going around the edges wherever I cut. And that's just gonna give it a more finished feel. So we don't see that white edging or the white core um, of the paper. I just take my time. It's in between these little areas that can be a little tricky, but not horrible. And I just have in between little shopping handles. There we go. So cute. So some of the fun comments you guys have been leaving uh, when I announced that we bought a new home is what do the kitties think? Um, since we made an offer on the house, I've been so excited to tell Mr. Harley that he'll have so many more places to explore because in our house now, he's not allowed to come down into the basement with me for a variety of reasons. Um, but in the new home, he's going to be able to pretty much go wherever. So I'm so excited about that. Uh, Jack and Gus, the babies, haven't even ever gone down a flight of stairs, so that's going to be interesting. They're funny enough going down the two stairs to get into the garage, so um, it will be interesting. Uh, Harley got a little stressed when we started packing and moving from Rhode Island back to the Cape, um, but I do know that Jack and Gus are probably going to be more stressed, so I've already been in contact with our vet and stuff, and she's given me some tips and some stuff. Stuff I can give them to kind of mellow them out a little bit. Um, Brienne says, I feel like I should buy another hoodie just helping out a friend. Brienne, you're so sweet. You do not need to buy another hoodie. You're good. You're a good girl. Um, hello, Margo. Yeah, the boy edging bugs me too. It looks very unfinished. So doing that brush marker tip is super awesome. Um, tip for the edging is to do it from the back side. So if it slips, it goes on the back. Oh, I love that. Thank you for that tip. Is that Christine Roy? I can't tell from your um, profile photo, but it says Crafty Chris. Thank you. That's a great idea. I didn't even never think of that. See, we can share tips with each other. All right, so that's my cute little Fussy cut, critters finished, ready to go. Let's talk about building this really pretty scene um, with watercolors, all right? So I am gonna be using uh, Distress Watercolor Cardstock. It's the only watercolor cardstock that I use. I'm gonna be using uh, the smooth side. Now, Purple Onion Stamps, they do come um, as red rubber no cling stamps. Um, and they are very easy to use, even though this is the case. Um, one thing I like to do when I get them is um, I, or I actually don't do it right when I get them. L let me be honest here. What I do is when I'm going to use it for the first time, I will go in and trim the extra red rubber. So I have not used this cow yet, although he is adorable. Um, but before I use him, I will take, and Tim Holt scissors are great for this. Um, I will go in and just take my scissors and snip out this extra red rubber. And again, I do straight cuts. I don't worry about doing curves as much. Um, you know, I kind of do straight chunks off. And this way, it'll help us see the shape of the stamp a little bit more so that we will be able to know where we're stamping. Now, again, I'm old, so I, or I, I've been stamping for a very, very long time. 
So I've been stamping long before we even had clear stamps. Um, so I'm very used to having a stamp on a wood block and just stamping it and you just get what you get. And like Tim says, you don't throw a fit. Um, I will say with purple onion stamps, I'm often fussy cutting them out or masking them. So the stamping doesn't always need to be super precise. Um, and when they're red rubber like this, people will ask me how I store them. I use a photo storage box. I actually use, this is four by six, and then I also use five by seven. And both of these will fit into my double fridge bins um, that you can see on my shelf back there that I store my clear stamps. And I put a bunch of like images in a uh, photo storage container. And I just do quick stamps of what is in this container. So if I'm looking through and I wanna try to decide what image I'm gonna use, oh my gosh, look how cute that mouse would be for an upcoming Valentine card. Um, I will just flip through like that. The other thing I do, which I mentioned, I do mask a lot with these images, is after I go through the trouble of fussy cutting a mask, I will stick it right on the inside flap of this photo storage container. And that way everything is together um, to use. And you could go as far as like labeling the top if you, if you wanted to, but that's how I store my purple onion designs. And the way that I use them is you could just use um, some double-sided uh, tape and an acrylic block or your misty um but purple onion has a cling mount stamp and if you're gonna get any stamps from them i highly recommend you just get the cling mount because it's gonna make your life so much easier so i have an older misty um because i did finally treat myself to the new style of a misty and I just keep this cling mount in this Misty, all right? It's like the material that, um, you know, that clear stamps are made out of, but it's a little bit thicker, I think. Um, and so this is what I use to get my stamping done, all right? Um, now, And again, sorry, I, I, I was like thinking how to explain something and I drew a blank. So this is what I use the most, okay? And it's a, it's a smaller cling mount. She also has a bigger one. Um, I honestly probably have the bigger one, but I'm not quite sure where it is. I'm going to find it soon, though, when I am packing, right? Um, however, when I am doing a large background like this, um. Again, I probably have the larger cling mount, but I'm just not quite sure where it is. What I end up doing is I'll just use a little bit of double-sided tape in my larger Misty um, because I want to be able to stamp on all four sides. So I'm gonna use my um, sticky mat. Is this making sense, hopefully? So this is my sticky mat. I'm gonna stick down my Distress Watercolor card stock. Smooth side up. I just think it'll get a nicer impression. And then I'm gonna just line my background stamp up. I took time and cut some of that extra rubber out. So I just know I want my trees to be on there more than um, the bottom of my scene. And then what I'm gonna do is just take a couple pieces of this double-sided tape. You don't need a lot, it's just enough to hold it for a second. Um, one thing about red rubber stamps is you're probably not gonna have to stamp it multiple times. Red rubber, I mean, clear stamps have come a long way and they do a great job. But red rubber, you definitely um, only need to stamp once to get a nice impression. Um, of course, my sticky tape is like, I don't want to play nice, Jen, because you have people watching you, so why would I do that? Oh my gosh, I'm starting new, you guys. Starting new, letting it go. 
um, is the back of the stamp sticky to put in your Misty. So some people, when I do use um, Purple Onion in my art retreat, some people don't even put tape down that the red rubber will cling a little bit to your Misty. I'm, I'm always afraid that it's going to drop on me. So I don't like to gamble like that. I rather just make sure it's not going to move. But in a pinch, you most certainly could. I like to just do a little bit of tape. You know what it is? I think it's this tape. I don't, let me try a different one. I was just trying to peel the tape in the air and it was like peeling in slivers. Let's try this. Again, I have many different brands and things that I'm unearthing um, as I'm packing. Oh my gosh, guys. Dear Jen, do this ahead of time next time so that people that are live don't need to wait for you for this to work. Okay, again, I'm just trying to get a little bit of tape on this background stamp. It's what it is about lives though, you guys. It's always real life crafting over here. All right, there we go. So I just have a couple pieces and then, um, oh look, I still have a piece in my window from before. Um, and then I'm just gonna close this down. Um, Kimberly's asking, would waffle flower mats work? They should work, Kimberly. Um, the thickness might be a little bit different, but I do think it should work. All right, so now we've got our watercolor cardstock, we've got our scene, and I am gonna use, uh, like I said, I'm watercoloring, but I'm gonna use Lawn Fawn Jet Black because it works with um, alcohol markers and watercoloring. making sure I'm getting all those areas of this really pretty background. And I'm gonna just come down, and again, with red rubber, you definitely don't wanna press hard. Um, you'll blur the um, lines because it is a very crisp stamping. You don't need to uh, give it CPR presses. I love that you guys are chatting with each other on um, on different ideas of ways of doing things. Uh, Pam says, I love that you use a variety of stamp companies and products. I'm always learning something new. Thanks, Pam. Well, this is my brain. This is how my brain is, always all over the place. So see that? Such a fun, fun background. So now we are gonna go ahead and watercolor this. I will clean that stamp later, because that's how I roll. And that tape will come off of the window of your Misty very easily. Um, you won't have any residue left behind or anything like that. So I'm gonna be using my Distress watercolor pencils um, because I'm obsessed. So if I haven't enabled you yet, I'm going to wear you down eventually. Um, I will tell you, these sets, um, I have some left over for my art retreat, so they are in my online shop at 30% off. Just saying, you guys. And then you can do all the things with me. Um, so I opened them up, and I've been kind of doing this with them, and they work like a palette right in their trays. <clears throat> um... And I do have a uh, scorched timber in here and it will be making a little bit of an appearance today because I had to use it. I mean, come on, right? So the first thing that I am gonna do is kind of color this fun little pathway. And that's when I did use a little bit of scorched timber. I'm using my number two round brush, not a fancy brush, but just a number two a round brush and I'm gonna dip my pen, my wet paintbrush into scorched timber. And I'm also kind of dabbing into a little bit of iced spruce. And I'm gonna trace along, ooh, that's very dark, so I'm gonna get a little bit more water. 
but I'm going to trace along this pathway on the inside of the pathway area. Okay, let me move in a little bit more for you guys. So I'm in that pathway. I'm going to add just a little bit more color. And then I'm going to come in with a wet brush, nothing on it. And I'm just going to kind of blur that edge out. So I want to just give um, a little bit of dimension to this walkway, but not a whole lot of color because there's going to be a lot of color um, everywhere else. OK, so now I'm going in, I'm grabbing a little scorch timber, a little bit of ice spruce. And I'm going to trace along the other side of the path. My brush is like separating on me weirdly. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You'll be able to smooth it out as you um, blend it out. So now I'm cleaning my brush. I don't have a ton of water on the edge of my brush, but I'm just kind of scribbling out along that edge to soften it and make it kind of down to nothing as you go inward into the path. This is very dark up here, so I'm actually gonna use a clean brush and pull some of this color away. Now, I will tell you, uh, if you wanna start playing with your Distress Watercolor Pencils anymore, um, I have an online technique class that I did last year around this time. Um, I did just do my Port Cute Pine class where we did some fun techniques with them. Um, and I had quite a few people take that class, not having really any of the stamps and dyes that I was teaching with, but they used critters that they had in their stash and just learn the techniques. So, and we did some really fun stuff with stencils and um, the Distress watercolor pencils. So, and I also have lots and lots of videos and posts for free on my website as well. So definitely check all of it out if you haven't already. So I just blurred and blended out um, that pathway and gave it a little bit of uh, dimension. And now what I'm gonna do is use some tumbled glass, again, Distress Watercolor Pencils. And I, actually, I'm gonna wait. I'm doing tumbled grass in the snow, but I want this pathway to dry a little bit. That's one thing that you wanna do is not do two places next to each other and have them be different colors because you're going to have some issues where it could kind of blend and blur into um, each other. Um, thank you, Brianne. Yeah, so what I did is um, to fit scorched timber in here, um, I took out my picket fence pencil. I don't use that one a ton, and I much rather have scorched timber in here. Um, the other three sets are going to be coming out by the end of the month, um, according to Tim and the live that he had uh, last week. And then what I'm going to do is Roy G. Biv all six sets together. So these will eventually be moved and jumbled in with the rest of the colors. And I cannot wait for the rest of the colors. I've been working with these three sets for almost two years now. So, right? Almost two. Yeah, almost two years. So I'm very excited. So now I'm going to do all my little um, Christmas trees. And I'm using um, Rustic Wilderness. Right? Yep. Just making sure I'm not saying the wrong names. And so I'm adding some rustic wilderness to my brush. And I like to do this upside down on these trees. And I'm essentially doing um, little lines of color up towards the underneath of the boughs, but I'm leaving the tips of the boughs white. So I'm kind of just bringing my brush down and pulling the color forward, okay? This is being a little bit lighter than I originally did it, but I actually like it, so I'm going to keep it. But see how I'm just doing little lines from 
the end of the boughs, but leaving the white of those ends or leaving the ends of the boughs white and pulling towards underneath the boughs. Does this make sense? So I'm basically leaving the tips white. But I do find it much easier to have this upside down and just pull your brush towards you in these little wispy um, lines. At the top of the tree, I'm leaving the tips white and the tippity top of the tree white. I'm thinking about where the snow is has fallen is what I'm doing. Okay. Oh, thanks, Margo. I'm so glad um, that you enjoyed Porcupine. It got you out of your comfort zone. I love that. Um, Pam says, now I'm enabled before they're even available. <laughs> um, so Picket Fence is fun to use on dark cardstock. Um, the black heavy stock from um, just the Distress line actually takes the watercolor pencils pretty well. And so it'd be fun to use as dark. You also could use the pencils dry without wetting them down. And I could see using the white pencil um, as some detail over some of the color. Um, I've used it in a few ways, but I'm more a color girl. So that's just what I'm gravitating towards. So I'm just doing the same thing on all these trees. And I like that at the ends of this green, it's wispy and choppy and not uniform, okay? <clears throat> so I absolutely love coloring with my alcohol-based markers, my Copics, but man, I'm... I'm loving, I love these pencils, you guys. And it's fun to just come up with different techniques to do with them. I will be having another, um, another technique class with the pencils. I don't know the exact date. I've got to get in the new house first. I'm, I'm too nervous to like start promising too much um, and then getting overwhelmed but I will have another Distress Technique class about the pencils, like a kind of a step two. Um, I would recommend if you haven't done the original class to do that before the second one, just because we'll be building on what we've already learned. Um, so here's your, here's your notice. Do that class while you're waiting for me to get moved um, and settled. So our new home is not far from where we live now. Um, it's actually only two miles. So we will still be going to the same beaches and restaurants and all the same things. I'm just so grateful that, grateful for a lot of things, but um, I'm so thankful that we didn't even have to think about moving off of Cape Cod. Um, I talked a little bit on my stories yesterday about the real estate market and the housing um, market here on the Cape. It is, it is a challenge. Um, you know, not going to sugarcoat things. It's a challenge here on the Cape. Being a, a vacation destination spot makes it tricky for those of us that live here all year round. I wouldn't change it. Um, you know, I think things can improve, but I love that part of the Cape, um, that it is a vacation destination and that the summer season is a hustle and a bustle and, brings many different people to a place that I love. Um, but I'm, you know, we weren't sure if we were going to find a place here on the Cape that we would be able to afford and, and that kind of checked all our boxes. So I'm so thankful. Uh, yeah, just got to use them more, Kimberly. The more you use them, the more comfortable you'll get with them. Uh, thanks, Erica. I appreciate you placing an order. Thanks, Jacqueline, for popping in. Thank you so much. Yay, yay, yay. Yeah, you can always come back to the replay, and we'll see you at Under the Sea on February 10th. All right. Oh, I missed this one little tree over here. I missed it. I missed it. I missed it. Let me just do this guy, and then we will do the next step. 
So I'm just kind of laying those wispy lines down and then I determine if I need to fill anything in or if it's splotchy or whatever. But I don't want it to be like this perfect line. I want some movement um, on the tips of those boughs. Um, so uh, Pam is asking what made us decide to buy a home. Um, we rent right now and our landlord wants to move back into the house. So um, instead of renting again, uh, Chris and I have wanted to own a home. So now's the time. It's actually not bigger. It's um, about the same size. So now I'm going to use Vintage Photo, and we're going to add some Vintage Photo. Um, did I use Vintage Photo? Yeah, I did. We're going to use Vintage Photo to these tree trunks and tree limbs. As I get up into the wispy, thinner parts of the tree limbs, I'm not going to worry too much about them. Um... And even if I color out of the lines a little bit, as I'm doing right now, uh, because when we start to do this background sky, we'll be able to kind of clean all that up and it's going to look amazing. Trust me. That's one thing about uh, watercoloring is it can be very forgiving uh, just by going over it with some clean water or your next color things kind of can smooth out and and fix fix itself so that's that's nice I like that because I'm not a very precise person so it's nice when when a coloring medium actually works in in my favor and not um not against me it's always nice <laughs> ah thanks Pam yeah big step for sure Yeah, we had thought um, we might want to purchase the house we're renting right now. We'd even talked with um, our landlord about that possibility. Uh, but uh, things change. I think some stuff in her life maybe has changed. And she's been awesome to us uh, for the seven years we've been here. Um, and she knew how much we loved it here. So it wasn't an easy conversation for her. But uh, I... I'm a believer that everything happens for a reason. So it's all good. It's all good. Hi, Kirsten. Thanks for popping in on my last live in the studio. Thank you so much. Yay. I appreciate you popping in. I know it's a, a weird time. I try to do different times for all my lives. And, you know, it's really what works in my schedule, but it ends up being all different times. So... I know a lot of people are working during this time. Um, so now I'm gonna use tumbled glass. And now that my walkway has dried um, naturally, again, you can see I haven't really used my heat tool for anything yet. I, I don't think I'll have to today, we'll see. But I'm just doing a generous amount of tumbled glass on the snowy side um, of this path. And then I'm gonna do um, the same thing that I did on the inside of the path. I'm gonna take my clean brush, I just cleaned it, and I'm just going to brush out that tumbled glass. And this is just giving the snow a little bit of hint of blue, um, even though it's white snow. Again, we're gonna have a lot of color on this card once we start to do our background. So I just don't wanna do too much color and have just a lot of color competing. So I also am gonna end up adding a little bit of this tumbled glass at the base of the trees. Um, <clears throat> so just kinda like to give these guys a little shadow that they're kind of sitting on. And it looks like I also did up along the hillside too. So I'm just laying down that tumbled glass right now. And then I'll go in with a clean wet brush and soften that all out. Let me just zoom out a little bit more. There we go. 
Uh, Kirsten, also, if you were to teach a purple onion class in 2024, I wouldn't be mad about it. It's on my list, Kirsten. No promises that it'll happen in 2024, but it's on my list. Um, Kimberly, I'm hoping the Cape is warm in March. Well, that's right, Kimberly, you are coming to Crop on the Cape. I just recognized your name. We start to memorize everybody's names when we're doing the seating chart and everything. March, March is interesting. I'm not going to lie. It's, it, it's been many different things during Crop on the Cape. Many different things. Um, I'm not going to stress about it just yet because there's enough time to worry about other things. Oh, boy. Look what I just did. So I just put my brush in my water. And on the edge of my water is leftover paint from different projects. And I just brought in a whole nother color. I think this, this is um, peacock feathers. So don't freak. I'm going in with some wet water and just pulling that away. But I was like, whoa, what just happened? There we go. You don't have to freak out when something like that happens. Um with just some wet water, you usually can fix it. And you can even blot a little bit with a cloth, um, but we're good. It's all good, all set. All right, so we're gonna leave our snow. Okay, and the last thing I'm gonna color is our lamp post um, before we get to our sky, which is the fun part. That's why I'm kind of breezing through this. And I'm using a little bit of hickory smoke on this lamp post. Um, I am gonna add some yellow to those lights, but not until I get my background done. All right, and by background, I keep meaning this sky. The sky is gonna be the intense part, so I just want to um, get that done. Oh, Miss Brianne, I hope someday you're able to come to the Cape. I would love that. Mary says a second vote for a purple onion class. Um, Pam says, when do you plan to pack up your room and actually move? Will there be a new craft room tour once you're settled? Oh, for sure. You guys will see plenty of my studio. I share a lot in my Instagram stories. So if you follow me on Instagram and watch those. Uh, but we're going to be out of here by February 1st, Pam. So <laughs> when do I plan to pack up your room? Uh, right after this live. Um, uh, thanks, Helen. Yeah, it comes together fairly quickly. Kimberly says that she froze last year at Crop on the Cape and she had lots of new shirt merch to wear. <laughs> oh. Okay, we have to get Brienne to Cape Cod because Brienne has never seen the ocean and I want her to see my ocean first. So for the sky, I am going to probably hold my cardstock sideways mostly um, just to kind of work, work around um, the trees. <clears throat> what I started with is, um, I'm trying to remember what I started with. I started with, uh, yeah, prize ribbon and villainous potion. So I am just grabbing, you guys can see I'm dragging my brush right here on that uh, prize ribbon. And I'm also dragging it on villainous potion at the same time. And I'm just going to come in here along the ground and start to kind of map out around my scene, okay? It's not, you're going to do a decent amount of stuff to this, so it doesn't have to be perfect just yet. But I like to kind of work my way around these images so that it's not so stressful and it ends up being all that's left are bigger areas to kind of watercolor around. So you can see I'm just kind of working, working through. Um, so again, it's a little villainous potion, a little prize ribbon. 
can go right over those little black and white branches of the trees because uh, distressed watercolor pencils are translucent. So we don't have to worry about losing them. We will um, still be able to see them. When I'm mapping this out around the images, I'm not even worrying if there is a little bit of white space still showing because I am gonna still be doing some more work to this and I can always, always go back in and dab in later. This is more just kind of starting to get some color down so it's not so intimidating um, and scary looking. Okay, now that was really dark, so I'm going in with just a wet brush now. I cleaned my brush of any pigment, and I'm just pulling that color. I want a variety of tones. I want some lights and some darks just to kind of look patchy like the sky kind of does, especially a winter sky, um, a cold winter sky as the sun is setting. And again, the trick with water coloring is just getting to know how much water is on your brush and when you're gonna want more water, when you're gonna want less water. Um, you know, it's it does just take some practice to get to know what works, how, and when. Um, a trick that I've often shared is after I wet my brush, I'll tap it to my hand because then I can have a sense of how much water is really on that brush. Looking at your brush, it's hard to tell, um, but having some sort of sense of how much water is there and whether you're gonna need more or less before you go into your project. That's why I like to use a paintbrush instead of a brush that has the water well. Um, I actually used to use those brushes that have water wells a lot back in the day. But the more I've done some watercoloring, I just find I am more successful with a paintbrush because again, I'm in control of the water and uh, the pressure of my hand on those um, pens that already have the water in them isn't the one controlling how much water I get when. So, so again, I'm just kind of going into these little nitty gritty pieces. But you can see by holding my paper sideways like this, I am able to take that brush and really kind of wisp it out. Um, if I was holding it upright, I would find it a lot harder, I think, to kind of get around these little areas. being able to kind of brush outward is what's really, really helping me. I also like that sometimes my brush picks up more blue and less purple and more purple and less blue, and I'm getting a really nice variety of color along my background. I like that. Um, I think that looks cool. Gives it kind of this uh, organic feel. And once I get some colored laid down, I go in with a clean brush and just start to kind of wisp out that color. So I am not looking at your guys' comments right now um, as I do this. We'll get to a stop point in just a minute. And if I'm missing any questions, um, you guys can ask again. Um, this isn't hard or anything, but it is one of those things I really kind of have to look and see what I'm doing uh, so I can avoid these uh, branches. And again, actually most of the branches can be watercolored over. So this background might have looked intimidating before we started, um, but once you lay that brown down on some of the trunks and some of the branches, you'll quickly see that most of the branches are ones that we can just color over. Um, and it's the background doesn't seem as intimidating once 
um, once we figure that out. Um, oh, Nancy's voting for a purple onion class too. I know when I ask you guys, I do questionnaires frequently, you know, a couple times a year, asking your input on things um, for upcoming classes mostly. Um, I have asked what companies you guys would like to see some online classes with. And uh, Purple Onion has been one of those ones that's been mentioned. Um, and I love Purple Onion, so you guys don't have to convince me. It honestly just comes down to time. It really is just time. Um, and uh, my friend Josie has been awesome. She's been helping me. She lives up in New Hampshire. She's a full-time teacher. But she's been helping me uh, answer emails. She's been helping me with class handouts. Um She's been helping me, you know, with crop on the cape stuff. So the more I get her to be able to help me with things like that helps take some stuff off of my plate so that I will be able to hopefully offer more classes. Um, but yeah, there's just not enough hours in the day, you guys. Just not enough hours in the day. All right. So I've gotten around all the scary parts, okay? And so now I'm gonna go back in with a little bit of that uh, prize ribbon and uh, villainous potion. And don't be scared if you lay a lot of color down like that. And I'm just gonna start to move around, fill in, see maybe where I want to um, add more color or take some color away. And then I did something kind of crazy, but I actually like the way it ended up turning out, <clears throat> is after I get these colors laid down, I went in with some picked raspberry. So, you know me, I couldn't keep it this purple, guys. Just kidding. This is beautiful just as it is. Um, but I just wanted to add a little pinky, pinky tone to it. But so see how pretty that is, you guys? See how fun? And as it dries. Yes, Josie is awesome. And yes, she does make the best flower sack cloths. I'm so happy she does that for me. It's definitely not necessarily the biggest money-making adventure because they are time-consuming, but she and I both love them so much. It was funny. So she had it on her list um, to make some more before the Creative Journey Art Retreat. I had run out of stock. And so I was like, just, you know, restock them by that event and whatever we have left after that event to sell, we'll put back in the shop. And, um, and she's like, okay. And so she made them and she delivered them to me and everything. And then she forgot to invoice me for them. And she's like, oh my gosh, you know, you're really enjoying your job when you forget that, you know, when accomplishing the task is enough reward, <laughs> then you forget to uh, invoice and actually get paid for them. So she did end up invoicing me, but we were both kind of laughing about it. I was like, oh, I totally know. Uh, how you feel about that. So see how this picked raspberry is just, it's adding like some fun, uh, a fun uh, variety and ombre and it's mixing so pretty with the villainous potion um, and the prize ribbon. I just really liked it. So I'm not doing a lot but it's just enough to kind of, I kind of lay a little bit down and then I bring in a little bit more water and really just kind of move those colors around and that helps blend them and kind of mix and mingle them. And I just think it looks so cool. So cool. If I was attending Crop on the Cape, which is my event in March, if I was attending as an attendee, I would just bring these distress watercolor pencils and a few stamp sets and lots of distress watercolor cardstock. Although if you run out, I know that Tracy at Papercraft Clubhouse will be stocking it. So, but look how cool. And I like how like pockets of blue and pockets of pearl, purple kind of stayed um, there and so fun. 
So fun. All right, did I miss any important questions? Brian's amazing at helping me answer questions during my lives. And I know Shari's really great at that too. But um, I wasn't sure if, if you needed me for anything. Yay, Heather just signed up for Under the Sea. Awesome. Yeah, I'm so excited to teach another class with Shari. East Coast Fawnies. It's going to be so much fun. Yeah, uh, Kristen said, distress pencils are easy to move around when you put too much color down. They don't seem to have that staining property for sure. Yay, Mary has a lot of backgrounds from Purple Onion. She's excited to try watercoloring them. And I really like watercoloring with a um, Copic colored critters like or image on the top like I think that really helps make that coloring pop as well <laughs> Shari is trying to write long fun emails oh that's fun that's fun all right so now I'm going to take this background and I guess you guys won't oh I forgot to color my lights you guys I forgot to add a little yellow to my lights so let me just do that I'm just going to pick up a little bit of mustard seed. And I thought about doing, eh, maybe I'll try it, a little bit of a glow. I didn't do it on my original card, but why not? Take that yellow and kind of go over um, what we already watercolored, which is cool because Again, those translucent properties. And I'll just use a little bit of clean water and kind of soften that edge. Oh yeah, look how fun that is. Our little lights glowing right there. All right, so we're just gonna trim this down to be um, four by five and a quarter. So I'm gonna take approximately an eighth of an inch off of all four sides. After you're watercoloring too, this is kind of a nice way to just kind of clean up those edges a little bit. Um, thanks Shari for popping a link, even though I know you're busy working. So five and a quarter. And then we're gonna do four. And I don't want too much off the top. I'd rather have more off the bottom. I really like how my sky turned out. Great, great. And I'm just going to zap this with the heat tool one more time just because I did just that yellow um, blend. <laughs> Kimberly came home last year with a full suitcase. I love that. Remind me where you live, Kimberly. I can't remember. Um... Yes, Jennifer says, since you're on the Cape, reddish sky reminds me of the saying, red sky at night, sailor's delight. Yup. <laughs> Kristen says, I want to decorate your brown naked trees with Christmas ornaments. Ooh, that would be pretty. That would be so pretty. You guys can do that and show me how it turns out. All right, so now that we have our background done, what I did is on my Christmas tree card, I splattered some of the gold Gonzai Tombi um, stuff. But on this one, I wanted to kind of splatter some snow. So I like to use the Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit, let's see. I'm trying to find, I'm going to just, I, this is just a piece of plastic. So I'm going to take a little bit of this white out of the jar. And I like to just water it down with a little bit of water. And we're going to add some splatters. I'm really surprised Harley stayed this whole time with me. I don't know if you guys see, he's actually facing me now, even though he's still sleeping. The kitties don't like when I'm talking to you guys. They don't stay with me. 
They don't like my animated Jen live voice, I guess. All right, and I'm just gonna splatter. We're gonna get some snowy snowflakes. So I'm just tapping that paintbrush. And then I will zap this with the heat tool again. It does dry very quickly, but um, I wanna move along and get some things assembled with you guys. So see that, we got some white, white snowflake splatters. So I'm just gonna move this aside. I'll clean this later, put it in my clean pile. Grab my flower sack cloth. Hello, hello. Ah, Florida, that's right, Kimberly. Yay, well I'm happy you're making the trek back up to Crop on the Cape. We're excited, Josie and I have already been planning, planning away. My friend, Jen Nickerson, she's already been thinking of games. Lots of fun stuff. <laughs> Shari says, it's snowing, boo. I don't know if that means it's actually snowing at your house, Shari, or now you're sad that it's snowing in my cityscape. It's gray here today. We are actually supposed to get some weather tonight here on Cape Cod we might get like two to three inches um but it doesn't stay around here very long so and I'm hoping that will just continue to be the trend this winter okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach my background to I have some sugar plum cardstock from Lawn Fawn a pretty purple And I'm just gonna attach that down flat with my ATG gun. Okay. And next what I wanna do is add some glitter. Glitter all of the things. I mean, we can't have a holiday card without a little glitter. So I'm gonna use Lawn Fawn Prisma Glitter and my Quickie Glue Pen. You guys, this glue pen is not dying. <laughs> I've been glittering so much, but can you see just a little bit of blue left? So let's see, let's see if I can kick it tonight or today on this live. So I just added um, some Prisma Glitter to the trim of the critters sweaters or jackets on their sleeves and along the waist and then I'm adding a little bit to the white stripes on the shopping bag I also traced this Christmas tree Okay, and that was it for glitter on them. And then on this background, what I did is I added some Prisma glitter to the tips of the tree boughs where we left them white. So instead of dipping the whole card in, I'm using the cap of my pen like a scoop. You want to do this in small sections because the quickie glue pen dries quick. So depending the speed that you work at, you want to um, just do little sections. <clears throat> Ooh, Margo's getting one to three inches. Yeah, we're going to probably get about the same. Yeah, Quickie Glue Pen is amazing. Definitely helps me uh, glitter all of the things. <laughs> all right. 
So I'm just gonna do all these trees. And then what I did is I traced, um, I traced the pathway. So we'll do that. And then we're gonna put our scene together. This has been so fun, you guys. Again, I can't believe that the next time that you join me, whether it be live here on my YouTube or in a class here on my YouTube, um, I'm going to be in a different space. It's crazy, crazy to think. I'm probably not going to know where anything is. You'll have to have patience with me. But it's very exciting because, again, I have been in this space long enough that I know, I know what I, I know what I know that I didn't know seven years ago when I set up this space. So, and of course, now that it is going to be, um, it's our home, we own it, we, I can really make it, make it what I want. So I'm very, very, very excited. I'll be sharing uh, lots of about the moving and stuff again over on my stories. You can watch them on Instagram or on my Facebook page. Um, I realize not everybody could care less, you know, some people could care less about that. Uh, but that's going to be my life for the next couple weeks. So, but I promise I'll be back. I won't be sharing as much creative stuff, but I will be back. All right, so now I am going to just trace along the street or the pathway and we're going to add just a little sparkle it's very subtle but it ends up looking really really pretty Again, I'm trying not to do too much at once because this quickie glue pen, it does dry really quick. Thank you, guys. Yeah, I feel like snow, for those of us that don't absolutely love snow, I think if we didn't have it, we would probably still miss it a little. I know there's a few times throughout the winter Chris is like I really wish this rain was snow and then I give him like evil eyes and he doesn't say it again um but I get it but I I don't know I much rather I much just rather have rain in the winter I just I used to love snow well I, didn't, I don't know if I ever love snow but I used to do a lot of winter activities but I just it's just cold I don't like being cold that's what it all comes down to I do think it's pretty, but I just don't like being cold. Um, okay, so for the sentiment, I stamped out warm wishes for a wonderful winter. And so what I did is I'm going to cut these guys into some word fetty strips and just do a quick, very quick ink blending just to kind of give them um, some color. So I like to do my word strips with my scissors so they're not perfectly straight. I like that look. I'm just trimming. I probably should have done this before I trim them apart, but I'm just trimming a little bit more um, off the top and the bottom on a few of these. And then... I am going to dust the edges um, with a little bit of Blueprint Sketch uh, Distress Ink. Hi, Carrie. No worries, you're not late. That's the beauty of a replay, right? So I'm just dusting these edges a little bit of blue just to make them pop on that snowy background. Whoops. So I painted my nails last Friday for my porcupine class. I wanted it to be a really fun 
um, kind of Valentine Manny for, <coughs> excuse me, for class. <coughs> then I'm going to die on live YouTube. No, I'm just kidding. Um, and I've been packing and cleaning and doing all the things, more, more, more crazy things with my hands than I'm normally doing. And I only have a few chips. Seven days later, I'm going to share a picture of it when I first did it. But you can see just a little bit of chipping with that good old Olive in June. I love those polishes. And it had been a while um, since I had a chance to do a Manny, a fun Manny. So it was fun. Probably won't do another one until I am in the new space, but it's all good. All right, so now we're going to put our scene together. And so I'm gonna add my little guys on here with some foam squares. I still haven't pulled out any big foam squares, so I'm really, really utilizing uh, these smaller ones, but that's okay. Get a couple behind those bunny ears. So let me know in the comments if I missed any questions, you guys. And of course, if you're watching the replay, you can always leave a comment um, below the video and I'll get a notification about those. Just a reminder, I would love, love, love if you Subscribe to my channel and also give this video a little thumbs up. That will help other people find the video. Uh, Carrie says, um, I decided after not being able to get Christmas done this la Christmas cards done this last year, I'm totally following along with your Get Cracking on Christmas. I think this is a great idea. Yay. I'm so glad uh, that you are going to join along, Carrie. And it doesn't always have to be on the third Thursday. Just just work on your cards. Um, thank you, Brianne. Yeah, I was just using the ink stand to do my ink blending. I didn't even mention it because it's like it's like a third arm for me to pull out my ink stand to hold my ink pads when I'm ink blending. Love the ink stands. Thank you, guys. Yeah, I thought that this was fun. This is a good, I also like, um, I love making winter cards. I know that seems like kind of crazy when I just told you guys I don't like winter, but I love snowflakes and snowmen on paper. So um, a lot of my holiday cards tend to have a wintry theme. And so I thought for January with my Get Cracking on Christmas, um, it is a great way to kind of, you know, maybe we're a little sick of all the Christmas colors and Christmas themes because we just finished up the holidays. Um, so this is a nice way to kind of ease into it um, and not, you know, be so like over it, right? So I just used some um, word strips. Um, I'm sorry, I just used some foam strips to put my word fetty on. And I'm just kind of tucking it along the critters and, I don't know, just placing it however I want. Right? And then the last thing that, oh, two, la two little things left. I put a little bit of the uh, Sakura black glaze pen on the tip of the bear's nose to give it a little shine. And then we're going to put all of these on card bases because this is what I do now. I know I know it's not what I used to do in the past, but I was pretty good last year. I put almost all of my cards on card bases. I don't know. Josie might say differently. Uh, Josie also helps me get cards ready to go in my cards for charity section on my website. So she might disagree, but I, I think I do a pretty good job or I did a pretty good job last year. I, I think I did better than the year before. Let's, let's say that. So again, um, let me know if you guys had any questions that I missed. 
You can put them in the chat now. I will pay attention a little bit better. Yeah, Brienne, whoever came up with the ink stand is a genius. <coughs> Excuse me, you guys. I don't know why I have a cough all of a sudden. Yeah, Katie says snow is fine if you don't have to go out in it. Inside where the heat is much preferred. I agree. And I'm lucky I work from home now, so... If it does snow, I usually don't have to go out in it, but <coughs> I just get worried about losing power when we have storms. So I just don't, I don't like to be cold. It, that's what it all comes down to. All right. Thank you again. There was a bunch of you guys that were able to join me live today, and I really appreciate that. So I wasn't here by myself talking to myself. That's always appreciated. Um, and, you know, again, a bunch of you have placed orders for my moving sale. I so, so appreciate that. Um because it's just going to make it a little less having to move. Um, and yeah, so we're moving by February 1st, February 10th, Shari and I will be live teaching Under the Sea, Lan Fong class with Critters in the Sea, which is a fun OG stamp set. That was actually voted by you guys. It wasn't voted by me, the mermaid. I mean, I'm not complaining, but that was you guys who chose which set you wanted um, us to use. Um, and yeah, lots of new crafty adventures in the new space in 2024. I can't wait. Can't wait. Look at that. Three cards, three card bases. We're off to a good start, you guys. Um, <clears throat> Katie says the bosses are away, so this mouse is at play. I love it. I love it. Yes, I love when you guys can join me live too. Hello, Melissa late to the party. No worries. Ah, uh, thank you so much. Yeah, we're very excited. I know there was, I didn't, I knew you guys would be excited to see my new space, but I was very like, it, it was a little bit surprising to me how many of you commented like, I can't wait, I can't wait to see the new crafty space. So I'm feeling a little pressure, you guys, but I know with Shari helping me and her amazing, um, you know, architectural skills of measuring, um, it's going to turn out really awesome. So I'm very, very excited. So one more quick reminder, if you're watching live or you're watching it very close to when I was live, um, till January 20th, I'm having a moving sale, 30% off binders and crafty gear, binders and crafty gear, everyone. Um, but yeah, please, please, please check out that sale. There's a lot of really, really fun items. Um, and yeah, so this is it, you guys. This is a wrap in this studio. Um, kind of bittersweet, but I'm very, very excited. Thank you guys so much. And I will see you next month for Get Crackin' on Christmas. Bye, guys. Thanks.